Welcome to Institute of Quality and Reliability. Hi, this is Heyman. Hypothesis Testing Part 2 Students T-Test Before watching this video, we recommend viewers to watch our video on Hypothesis Test Part 1 which explains Introduction and One Sample Z Test. Link to this video is provided in the description of this video. In our video Hypothesis Test Part 1, we have discussed about choice of parametric test. So when the type of data is variable and there is only one sample, you can have one sample Z or one sample T. And you can also have two sample comparisons and multiple sample comparisons. And similar tests are available in the attribute data. One sample test, two sample comparisons and multiple sample comparisons. When the population standard deviation sigma is known, then only you can use the one sample Z test. And when population standard deviation sigma is not known, then use the one sample T that uses the student's T distribution. And we will discuss about this one sample T test in this video. One sample T test uses student's T distribution. It is used when population is normally distributed and population standard deviation sigma is not known to us. The T statistic is calculated similar to the Z statistic and is given by T calculated X bar minus mu zero upon S upon square root N. The term S upon square root N is called standard error of mean. This T calculated value must be compared with the critical value of T. T critical depends on the confidence level, number of tails and degrees of freedom. We will explain the term degrees of freedom in this video. Degrees of freedom Degrees of freedom is number of independent comparisons that can be made from the data points. If there are three data points, for example, 8, 5 and 4, then we can have two independent comparisons. The third comparison is not independent. Therefore, we can say that the degrees of freedom is n minus 1. In general, let us say that we have three numbers a, b and c. So the first comparison between a and b will be a minus b. The comparison between b and c will be b minus c. Now, if we add the two comparisons, b gets cancelled and we automatically get the third comparison a minus c which obviously is not independent therefore the degrees of freedom for the three numbers a b and c would be 2 thus when we know a minus b and b minus c a minus c is no more independent as b gets cancelled let us see a simple illustration Consider that we wish to divide a 100 cm long bar into two pieces. Obviously, we have a freedom to choose length x of any one of the pieces. The length of the other piece is automatically decided at 100 minus x. Similarly, if we want to divide the bar into three pieces, we will have freedom to choose lengths of two pieces. Extending the logic to divide the bar into n number of pieces, we will have freedom to decide length of n minus 1 number of pieces and that is the degrees of freedom for n data points. Therefore, to conclude, we can say that degrees of freedom for n data points is n minus 1. Let us see an example of student's t-test. A soft drink plant is filling a particular type of soft drink in cans of 300 milliliters. Regulators require that the volume cannot be less than specified limit. Also, filling excess soft drink volume will be a loss for the company. Therefore, it is necessary to set the mean fill volume at 300. To verify the setup of filling station, 
the quality control inspector checks volume of first 16 cans. The data is shown here. Is the company meeting target mean of 300 ml? And this is the data. So we must first define null and alternate hypothesis. The null and alternate hypothesis will be H0 mu is equal to 300 and H1 mu not equal to 300. Now we need to calculate the T statistic. The T statistic can be calculated as follows. Note that we do not know the population standard deviation and therefore we need to use sample standard deviation S. Average and standard deviation S can be easily calculated on Microsoft Excel or also on calculator. We have shown this on one of our previous videos. Link is provided. This is the data and at the bottom of the data, you can see that the calculated value of average X bar is 299.6 and standard deviation S, which is the sample standard deviation is 0.585. The T calculated is X bar minus mu zero upon S upon square root N and that is equal to 299.6 minus 300 upon 0.585 upon square root 16 and it works out to be minus 2.74. Now this T calculated must be compared with critical value of T and the T critical depends on the confidence level number of tails and degrees of freedom. Now we need to decide the confidence level and understand the number of tails. Confidence level. We will use confidence level of 95% that is 0.95 which is used in most such decisions. As confidence level is 95%, alpha risk will be 5% or 0.05. Number of tails. Depending on the objective, number of tails is decided. In this case, the null and alternate hypothesis were H0 mu is equal to 300 and H1 mu not equal to 300. As we are interested in knowing whether the cans are filled with mean 300, we are interested in both the tails. This is therefore a two-tailed test. Student's T distribution was published by William Gossett in 1908. His employer was Guinness Breweries and the employer required him to publish under pseudonym and therefore he chose a name student. Student's T distribution is a sampling distribution and its shape depends on degrees of freedom. We will now see shapes of some student's t distribution with various degrees of freedom. For that I am using Minitab software version 17. I click on the graph command and I use probability distribution plot and I use vary parameters where I can see student's t distribution with different degrees of freedom. In the distribution I select t in the degrees of freedom values, I say 1 and let us say 10. In the multiple graphs, I say overlaid on the same graph. If I click on OK, now I can see two distributions. The blue one is with one degree of freedom and the other one that is dotted one is with 10 degrees of freedom. Now you can clearly see that in the tail area under the distribution with one degree of freedom is much more in tails compared to the middle. So if we want to see this area, let us see how this looks like. I will use the epic pen to highlight this area. This is the extra area that I have in the tails compared to the distribution with 10 degrees of freedom. You can probably easily see that on the left side also it's a similar situation. Note that the t-distribution is symmetrical around its mean that is zero. So you can see that how the tail area is more under the blue distribution. As we increase the degrees of freedom, 
the t distribution approaches normal distribution especially after the degrees of freedom increase beyond 30 so let us see that in the same command graph probability distribution plot vary parameters and now instead of 110 i'll use okay i'll first add 30 so you can see that the one with 30 and the one with uh, 10 degrees of freedom do not have so much difference compared to 1 degree of freedom and 10 degrees of freedom. So let us now increase the degrees of freedom more than 30 also. So we will compare degrees of freedom. So I will go to the same command again and I select vary parameters and then T distribution and then I select degrees of freedom as 10, 30 and 100. 100 is very large and it will be probably something like a normal distribution only. So now I can see the three distributions. There is a fair amount of difference between 10 and 30 degrees of freedom. But the difference between 30 and 100 is barely uh, visible there. Very little difference between the two distributions. We now further increase the degrees of freedom to 100 and 500. So 100 and 500. You can probably barely see the difference. They are almost overlapping. So they are actually approaching normal distribution. And this is nothing but the standard normal distribution curve that it is approaching. As the sample size is 16 in our example, degrees of freedom are 16 minus 1 that is 15. Therefore, we should find critical value of two-tailed T distribution with 15 degrees of freedom from table of t distribution use table of students t distribution to determine the value of t critical and compare this value with calculated value of t statistic which is t calc this is the table of t distribution which can be downloaded from our website www.world-class-quality.com in the table, we must locate a value equal to two-tailed alpha risk of 0 0.05. That means one-tailed alpha risk of 0 0.025 and 15 degrees of freedom. This value is 2.1314 as you can see here. Now let us interpret the analysis. This is a two-tailed test. Therefore, if T calculated is beyond T critical on any of the tails, we should reject null hypothesis H0 and accept alternate hypothesis H1. Note that alpha risk of 0 0.05 is distributed equally on both tails and therefore alpha by 2 that is 0 0.025 will be on each tail and you can see this in the figure. As T calculated of minus 2.74 is beyond the critical value of T critical minus 2.1314 in the left tail, we must reject H0 and conclude that the mean value of liquid is less than 300. We say less than because the T critical is negative and T calculated is also negative. This conclusion can be made at 95% confidence level. We can also use template from Institute of Quality and Reliability to solve this problem. If you want this template, please write to us on the email as shown here. Here we use the template for one sample t-test with two tails. You also have templates available for left tail and right tail. And here H0 mu is equal to 300. We provide the input in the yellow boxes. H1 mu not equal to 300. Alpha risk default is 5%. Standard deviation we put as 0.585 which we have calculated on Excel. Sample size is 16. X bar we have calculated before as 299.6. And when we provide this input, the calculated value of T appears as minus 2.735 which we know is uh, almost same as minus 2.74 which was a rounded value 
critical value of t distribution it has automatically calculated as 2.1314 and the result is reject null hypothesis there is a nice interactive app developed by the university of iowa this is that app of students t distribution this app is copyright of matt bogner department of statistics and actuarial science university of iowa let us input the value of degrees of freedom nu that is 15 in our example and now if i insert the value of x which is t critical for example i put minus 2.1314 which was the critical value of t distribution for 15 degrees of freedom and 5% alpha risk on both tails as expected we see area in the left tail as 0 0.025 which is half the alpha risk now i put value of calculated t statistic which was minus 2.74 and it will show you area to the left of this value in the tails and that area is 0 0.00759 equal area will be to the right of plus 2.74 so if you double this area 0 0.00759 that value is called the p value and that is 0 0.01518 in this case so 0 0.01518 p value actually can be used to decide whether we want to accept or reject null hypothesis if this p value is less than the alpha risk we must reject the null hypothesis it is obvious because if the p value is less than the alpha risk that means you have crossed the critical value of the distribution this is a generic rule for other distributions as well here is an exercise for practice historically a company has been completing new projects with mean time of 10 weeks the management has changed the organization about 6 months back after introducing the new organization structure, data of time to complete 10 projects is collected and is shown here. Has the mean time changed after reorganizing? Assume 95% confidence level. Here, mu0 is equal to 10, n is equal to 10, null hypothesis h0, colon, mu is equal to 10, alternate hypothesis h1, mu not equal to 10, Therefore, this is a two-tailed test with alpha equal to 0 0.05 distributed on both tails. As the standard deviation of the population is not known, we must use student's t-test to solve this problem. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it worth watching. Please subscribe to Institute of Quality and Reliability channel if you want to watch more videos on Reliability Engineering, Six Sigma and Statistical Quality Control. Click on the subscribe and bell icon to get notified for future videos.